So the concepts that we come across fairly early on in Paolo Freire's Pedagogy of the Oppressed are all big concepts, right? The, the concept of humanization, and that is uh, uh, paired with the concept of dehumanization, is actually really central to a lot of what he's talking about. And it's very similar to what uh, I was uh, talking about related to Ivan Illich's book, uh, Deschooling Society. The idea that in, in some way, education can take away a person's humanity, right? Or it can impart humanity to them. And he, he argues very strongly that freedom is an essential aspect of humanity and that any sort of oppression really involves dehumanization because it takes away those essential characteristics of humanity by constraining individuals' freedom or constraining uh, groups of people's freedom um, so that it, it, it's, it's possibly the worst dehumanization, it's possibly the worst outcome you could have from education. And it affects both the, both the oppressed and the oppressor. In my book, in uh, um, chapter one, right at the beginning of chapter one, uh, whoops, let me, whoops, let me see if I can get my pointer working again. Right at the beginning of chapter, sorry, I'm using my cursor to draw. Chapter one. Um, he talks about dehumanization in particular and how, let's see if I can get this to work. And how that is really an unfortunate element, <laughs> uh, to say the least, of education. He says on the, on the second page of chapter one, he says, uh, because it is a distortion of being more fully human, sooner or later being less human leads the oppressed to struggle against those who made them so. And in order for this struggle to have meaning, the oppressed must not, in seeking to regain their humanity, become in turn oppressors of the oppressors, but rather restorers of the humanity of both. In other words, those who are oppressed and those who are doing the oppressing, both of these groups, are dehumanized by a process that constrains their freedom. Now, when we think about uh, education in relation to dehumanization processes that constrain freedom, um, what are some of the examples that you would come up with? How would oppressors exploit the oppressed through education? How would they, as, as he says in chapter one, how would the oppressors rape the oppressed by virtue of their power? Right? How does that happen? How are freedoms constrained? Because we normally think of education, especially uh, formal education, when it reaches into corners of the world where it hasn't been available to before. We often think of it as a liberating element. And what Paolo Freire is suggesting is that this, this institutionalized formal education system that we see worldwide is not so much the, the liberator uh, of nations as much as it is the oppressor of nations. And he says that, that because it has this constraining element, it dehumanizes, it takes away the essential elements of humanity. What are some characteristics of the oppressed? Well, one is that the oppressed tend to internalize the oppressor. In other words, they want to take the role of the oppressor and they fear freedom from the oppressor. This is called, and uh, if we were to look at uh, Marx, you might have heard of Karl Marx. This is called the manufacture, manufacture of consent. Uh, other words uh, that we use are victimization, etc. But manufacture of consent is actually one that I like quite a bit because I think it really uh, talks about how the oppressors and how the, the educational system in particular that conveys the oppressor's dominant ideology creates a willingness among the oppressed to, to be oppressed. Right? It manufactures their understanding or their acceptance uh, 
of the uh, constrained freedom that they have, of limited knowledge and access that they have, of their reduced uh, power and choice that they have, right? And that they would actually fear any sort of element that would uh, really not be completely controlled. And you can see this, I think, uh, again, where would you see this? How could you empirically observe this? In a lot of marginalized communities, and by that I, I generally mean poor and uh, racial or ethnic minority status communities, uh, these, are, these are traditionally oppressed communities, will have educational systems that will operate under the same set of standards and assumptions that an educational system would operate in an elite, wealthy, basically oppressor community. All right? They're still held to the same curriculum, still held to the same performance standards for education. And if, if students in those marginalized communities fail to meet whatever those uh, uh, mainstream standards are, then they're considered failures, not only by the oppressors, by the elite themselves, but also by their own community. All right, so what is the result? Well, uh, Paolo Freire says that the result is that the oppressed really suffer from a uh, duality. They're fearful of freedom, uh, yet freedom is, of course, the core of humanity. They are affected both themselves and their oppressors by this um, duality, right? And the oppressed themselves are divided because they become what he calls unauthentic beings. In other words, nobody wins in a, a power dominance relationship. Everybody loses because everybody is dehumanized. All right, in our next video, we will talk about myths of the oppressors.